Have you ever wondered about the Magnum motors and just who would spend $150 on a brush motor? Well, I'll tell you that I will. I'm John Holmes with the Holmes Hobbies and today we're going to go over what makes the Magnum motors special. Today I wanted to do a more in-depth look at the Magnum motors. We have had some videos in the past covering it, but I had some requests for just more information on them, really going into detail on what makes them special. And here are three Magnum motors in front and the Magnum rotors right next to them. And as you can see, compared to a normal 540 rotor, it is a lot bigger in diameter. And since the torque of a motor is the square to the diameter, it ends up being a pretty noticeable difference as far as how you can drive the rig, how it performs when you hit loads, and just in general, it is a really, really fun motor to drive. Um, it kind of drives like a revolver in my opinion. It's really like an outrunner, but it's a brush motor. So it's not an outrunner, obviously. It is actually an inrunner motor. So let's just take a look at some of these Magnum motors. This is actually our first run that we did of it. We were using this standard Sagami can, same as what we use on, say, the Crawlmaster Pro. However, we threw some thin neodymium magnets inside it instead of the thick magnets you, you would typically find on a motor. And that gave us more room for rotor. And essentially, we use stronger magnets. We use a bigger rotor. And so the interior of the motor ends up being more active motor. And more active motor is more power. We can think about this in two different ways. One of them is the diameter of how much active motor that we have inside. And the torque of a rotor is actually the square of the radius. So as we get bigger and bigger in the rotor, we get more torque to a, a quite large margin because of this rule. And that's because the area of a circle is the square of the radius times pi, of course. The pi doesn't change. Um, and the other way that we can look at a larger motor producing more torque or more power is the length of the motor. The, uh, you know, like we can tell these two motors are different lengths. And if we're only gonna talk about length, then it's a simple linear relationship. So a motor that has twice the rotor length will be able to produce twice the torque and twice the power, at least in an ideal theorized world. So the Magnum motors, having a much larger rotor produce a lot more torque and a lot more power and they drive just uh it's kind of hard to describe but they really drive in a very unique way kind of like an outrunner so let's just uh take a look at the inside of these here is our old style the first ones that we put together this was in a regular sagami can and we put our magnets in there and after a while i figured you know why don't we just make these a little bit fancier and do a fully machined can and just uh, actually reduce a little bit of weight and make them look really cool. So that's what we currently have. And to take them apart, all you will need is a really short Phillips head screwdriver and a little bit of luck getting this Phillips head screwdriver into the screw. Uh, number one Phillips head screwdriver, of course. So we loosen these screws. I engineered these cans to take apart just like a normal 540 motor. So we loosen these screws. We can rotate our end bell about 45 degrees and the end bell just pops right off. We have our retaining ring on the inside. Let's see if I can get this rotor out. Ah, and let's see here. Maybe you can see in that close up shot the nice gold plated magnets. Nice gold plated magnets and the reason why we did the gold plating was mostly for looks but also corrosion resistance and Not that I want anybody running these nice expensive motors through water and crud, but just so it's there It's good to have and you can look and just tell the difference in the rotor length on the stubby version versus our standard 540 version the stubby is a lighter more competition oriented motor whereas the standard version is going to be essentially your full size 540 you wouldn't know the difference if you didn't know if i didn't tell you what the difference was now if we're going to talk about what really makes these guys special why are these better than a machine wound motor or a motor that you're going to find uh, from, let's say, a Chinese copycat that has tried to copy our Magnum motors. The big difference, we hand wind these in-house. This fits a lot more copper onto the coils, and more copper is lower resistance. More copper lets you have more torque and more power and higher efficiency. It really makes them drive better. And when you get up to a load, you're going to have less stall. It's going to pull through a lot more reliable. The other changes that we have as compared to a more mass-produced motor... Uh, Keep in mind that some of these copy companies out there are saying that they hand wound, that they that they have hand wound coils in them, and they actually do not. So keep that in mind. 
The other difference is that we have epoxy balanced rotor. You can see these bits of green epoxy on there. And the reason why we do this is for a very smooth startup. When you do rotor drilling, you actually change the magnetic field of the rotor. It makes it to where each detent spot has a different amount of torque that it takes to break it. And this makes startup not only unreliable, but you know, honestly, relatively rough. It's not something that I do in our hand-wound motors, period, unless somebody specifically wants that in a custom motor. So we do the dynamic balancing in-house with this very fine German epoxy, and it gives us the best startup, the slowest startup, and the most consistent startup possible. The other things that we do that set it, sets this apart from any other motor out there for the most part is that we braise the commutator. And you can kind of see possibly on the detail camera the discoloration from this still. And that's because it is a high silver amalgam that we use. And it melts at, I believe, about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a lot higher than the 350 Fahrenheit that solder would melt at. What this makes is a motor that is extremely reluctant to die. So you, you really can't overheat them unless you literally catch them on fire. And of course, when you're at that point, your motor's probably toast anyway. Uh, but what we don't want to see is people slinging solder off the rotor and that causing failures when it should be able to operate in those sorts of temperatures, at least theoretically. But this does make, make for a much more solid rotor and a much better connection than just solder would have. The high silver and copper amalgam has a much better conductivity than it otherwise would have. Now, the last thing that we do on these rotors that sets them apart is that we dip these in house with a very high quality resin. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking a resin that is in the order of many hundreds of dollars per gallon. It is not a cheap resin. It is by far the best one that we have found available. And then we bake them. It bakes these coils in to where they do not come apart. These coils are not going to sling off. The balance is never going to change unless it catches on fire, of course. Uh, I should note that everything that I say is null and void once the motor catches on fire. We, we can't assume that it'll have good balance and smooth startup after this fire has happened. But these coils are affixed very well. They're not going anywhere. You can run this thing up to 200 Fahrenheit, absolutely no problem, and the rotor will still be fine. So these all add up to be pretty much the best motor that I can possibly make. Um, I'm not really sure how I could improve them much more, to tell you the truth. We do our best to have quality along every step in the process. There's a lot of steps to where we kick out our, our bad armatures. Maybe there's a short in the armature. Maybe it doesn't balance well enough. There's a lot of uh, you know little steps along the way that ends up costing us money as far as having scrap, essentially. And that's just part of it, though. You know That is factored into it because, of course, there's going to be mistakes here and there along the manufacturing route. But we call those out for you. We build the motors up in-house as much as we possibly can. We make sure that everything is as high quality as possible. And if you're looking for a motor that is really the ultimate in brush motor, it has extremely fine startup, extremely good torque response, and it is built for competition type settings. Or if you're just a motor snob like me and you really like that feel, the Magnum is really going to be the motor for you. But of course, if you don't want to spend that much money, you can always go with a standard hand wound like the Crawlmaster Pro or the Torque Master Pro, and you can get that really good throttle feel, the really fine startup with the same features as the Magnum line has. However, it just doesn't have the large rotor. It would have a standard size rotor, just as you can see here. So if you do have any more questions about the magnets, feel free to post them below and I will do my best. Maybe there's something that I didn't cover or there's something that you just want to know. And I would love to know what you would like to know. So as always, I do thank you for tuning in and have a good day.